video will spoil the end of One Piece. A chart artist's game plan has been revealed, and it's set up to quite literally turn the world upside down. Beginnings will become endings, endings will conversely become beginnings, certain skull-shaped islands will be rotated by 90 degrees, and certain islands named Laugh Tale will be revealed. Except we've already seen it. The first words in the series, which were Roger's last words, told us exactly where it was, and the final key to everything lies in the most unlikely of birds. I'm not kidding, the very fact that South Birds exist, as well as North, East, and West Birds, has completely given away the game. This is the conclusion that was drawn up by a prominent Japanese One Piece channel called Drop the Pizza. There will be a link to their video in the description, it actually has English subtitles, and it is well worth watching. But if you've not heard this before, I legitimately believe that this is the best One Piece theory period. And I'm someone who really doesn't like theories. I think a lot of them tend to be far-fetched, tunnel vision guided examinations of hyper-specific yet somehow also hyper-vague factors to form a conclusion that almost never comes to fruition. But this theory is a completely different beast, and it can be summarized in two words. Whole shift. Now unfortunately, without the rest of this video, those words are, well, they're meaningless, but those two words put in quite a lot of work. They explain how the One Piece world formed, where Laugh Tale is, why Roger was too early, and also why everything on the island was so uncontrollably hilarious. So as you may have guessed by now, a pole shift is an obscure global geographical phenomenon. And if there's anything we know about a certain Etura Oda, it's that he loves the thing it is that I just said. Oda quite commonly inserts both real world and hypothetical phenomena into the world of One Piece, with stuff like the warm eddy that Jewelry Bonnie got caught in, the underwater currents on the way to Fishman Island, the knock up stream, which is just like a, like a super geyser, and in particular, Oda pays very special attention to magnetic forces. These forces have guided us throughout the entire series through log poses and eternal poses, because magnets are of the utmost importance, usually. And there is one massive phenomena that Echira Oda has yet to take advantage of, one that would, quite literally, change the world, and that is the pole shift. This concept isn't new or even fictional. In fact, over the course of Earth's history, a magnetic pole shift has occurred on at least 183 occasions, which effectively swaps the North and South Poles resulting in all sorts of crazy effects. That's not exactly what Drop the Pizza are proposing though. In fact, what they're suggesting is significantly more drastic and nigh on apocalyptic. Their pole shift would see the axis of the One Piece planet shift by a full 90 degrees, which would also completely reshape the world as we know it. And also, they suggest that a pole shift occurred during the Void Century, which is how we've ended up with the insane world we have today, which at first I thought was a very radical and perhaps a bit too out there kind of idea, but this theory, it ain't messing around. What seemed to me like an obscure phenomena is actually quite commonly explored in sci-fi series and also anime in particular, such as Neon Genesis Evangelion, where Second Impact shifted Earth's axis, but more importantly in Hayao Miyazaki's Future Boy Conan, a 1978 television series that takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where magnetic weapons have literally torn continents apart, resulting in a pole shift effect. Hayao Miyazaki is important because Echiro Oda cites him as a big influence across his career. In one Peace Grand Blue Data File, Oda names Miyazaki as one of his favorite directors, alongside Quentin Tarantino, Tim Burton, and surprisingly, Baz Luhrmann. So I guess Etchiro Oda is a pretty big Moulin Rouge fan. With Miyazaki in particular, his work has been referenced all throughout One Piece. However, Oda has yet to take advantage of Miyazaki's most relevant to the One Piece world idea. And at this point, you might be going, eh, look, it's just a wacky story about comic book pirates, bruh. It, is, it ain't that deep. Well, actually, it is that deep, which I say purposely to force shadow a future part of this video. In One Piece Magazine Volume 9, a sketch of the world map was published, a sketch which was only drawn after the Straw Hats reached Logtown, in preparation to take the story into the wider world, which I want to linger on for a second because this was a big breakthrough moment, because we have never received an official map of the One Piece world. I mean, outside of stuff like this, which marks the vague shape of the world in a kind of helpful but still completely devoid of any useful detail kind of way, but every actual map we have with locations and such is fan-made, with the exception of this East Blue map drawn for the Logtown novel. But it's hard to know how canonically we should be taking that. Although I will note that in the calm belt, there is apparently someone drowning and making the peace sign, which is quite an optimistic way to die, and good on them, I guess. But Oda's map sketch is the closest thing we have to an official world map, and it comes equipped with quite a few curiosities. Firstly, this map contains a location called Corkwood, which is apparently a 10 kilometer high cliff near Reverse Mountain, which means that the peak of this cliff would be roughly as high
by a Sky Islands, but it has yet to be seen or even mentioned in the actual series. Another puzzling feature is a location known as King's House, which we see plonked right at the end of the first half of the Grand Line, and it's speculated that this was the original name for Marineford. Oh, and also Otispell's Grand Line is Gland Line, which is fun, and I imagine this is the alternate reality where Zolo lives. This map is extremely enlightening though, especially in regard to the Four Blue Seas. Oda has created quite a vivid picture of them. There's also a compass marking north, east, south, and the other direction, but at the top here is the most important part where Oda has drawn the planet itself and even marked out its rotational axis. What kind of madman world builds to this degree? Remember that this was made when Logtown was being published. So for whatever reason, the specific axial rotation of the planet is important to Oda. And the whatever reason is this one. Because if a pole shift were to occur and the planet unceremoniously fell 90 degrees onto its side, or I guess now fall onto its up, then what was the equator, which is currently the Grand Line, would become the Red Line, which is important because Japanese. In Japanese, the equator is called the Sekido, which quite literally means Red Road. Also very interesting because we have Red Road Poneglyphs as well. Thus linguistically implying that the Red Line was once the equator of the One Piece world. Oh, and there's also a potential clue in Oda's hand-drawn map as well. It contains a piece of text that can only properly be read when the map itself is turned 90 degrees left. The text simply says East Blue with an arrow pointing just above North Blue. But unless Oda was just being a bit of a weirdo, it shows that he was looking at this map from its pole shifted perspective and jotted down this note at that point. To catch us up, the idea is that the One Piece planet once looked like this and then it shifted to this. And now the idea is that we're gonna shift it back to what it was, which is this, which was that, and is now this. It's this. Which means that the Grand Line and the Calm Belt as we know them would cease to exist. That's an explanation the actual video goes over in some painfully scientific detail of like water movements and such. But all you really need to know is that right now on its current axis, the greatest concentration of water is in the middle of the planet, being the Grand Line and the New World. If a pole shift occurs, then a whole ton of that water is redistributed elsewhere. And we actually have evidence that this may have happened before. The oldest known object in the One Piece world is the Tree of Knowledge on Ohara, or I guess I should say was the Tree of Knowledge. It's, it's mostly not there anymore, but it was at least 5,000 years old and had a very curious indentation at the base, almost marking where the water level on Ohara used to sit. And Ohara is of course in West Blue, which on the planet's current rotational axis would have a lower water level. Hence why you can do stuff like walk around on the island, study on the island, and in the case of certain marines, commit genocide on the island. For a Grand Line based example, Impel Down seems to hit the mark pretty well because it would have been nigh on impossible to build this structure underwater. However, if it was built during the previous pole shift, then it simply would have been submerged. You could even argue that the walls around Wano may have been built to protect it specifically against rising water. Although to be fair, it had the same general result in the end by turning Wano into a big old rain bucket. But even that may have been intentional because Wano and I suppose Pluton were preserved relatively well because they weren't drowned in salt water. But even then, I wasn't convinced until I saw this next piece of evidence. And this is where the glorious South Bird comes into things. As with most completely wild, insane One Piece theories, this all comes back to Jaya, and the revelation that when you put the maps of Skypea and Jaya together, they make a big old skull. But did you see it? Did you see the thing that happened here? Because this blew my absolutely tiny mind brain. The skull is only upright when the maps of both Jaya and Skypea are rotated left by 90 degrees. If this was still one island in our current climate, the skull would be on its side. However, fictional evidence suggests that the correct orientation of the skull is upright. On Jaya, there is a location called South Grave, a forest where we find all of the delightsome South birds. However, South Grave on the Jaya map is actually east, and it only becomes south when you put the Skull Island together again and rotate it left by 90 degrees. And it's not just named south because that's where we find South birds. This forest is actually home to north, south, east, and west birds, all of which are tuned to the current directional system because they're subject to magnetic forces. Now I will say that a phenomena like this cannot occur suddenly, because if it did then it would rip the world apart and that's, well that's just not very nice. But something like this could happen gradually over time, which is what gradually means. And Drop the Pizza made 
and intriguing point about how the planetary rotation of the One Piece world seems to be very slow. For example, days in One Piece seem to be significantly longer than how we experience days in not One Piece, such as that day when Luffy left Dawn Island, fought Alveda, recruited Zoro, and fought Buggy, all again, allegedly, on the same day. That is a very busy day. Luffy there putting even Etra Oda's work schedule to shame. To counter this, Oda has repeatedly emphasized that the One Piece world operates on a 24 hour system. We even know the details of when the Straw Hats sleep and wake up, but to counter the counter, their hours could just be longer than ours. Still 24 if them, but maybe their 24 is the equivalent of our 36 or even 48, because the time system is based on rotation. And if the One Piece world has a slower rotation, then days are going to naturally be longer. So consider that Luffy set sail on May 5th, and the Battle of Marineford took place in early July. So the vast majority of pre time skip One Piece happened over the course of roughly two months. That is the most eventful two months in the history of any civilization. And it really puts things into perspective, like when Luffy asked Gats to hold off Doflamingo for 10 minutes. And then it took us about two months of real world time for that 10 minutes to be published, so perhaps that was just a taste of how long 10 minutes in the One Piece world actually is. But here's the part where we get to the big revelation. A pole shift would result in a reversal of sea currents, so everything going one way is now going the other way, which would mean that the journey through the Grand Line is reversed. Lodestar Island is now the beginning, and Reverse Mountain is now the end point, which makes some sense. Lodestar Island is sort of like a tutorial island, given that it says, hey, during your journey, you should look out for these things, which I imagine is very unhelpful to discover right at the end of the game. But also drop the pizza posit that Lodestar Island can also be read as Road Start Island, which would not at all surprise me given that Raftel also became Laugh Tale. Lodestar Island, by the way, isn't a translation. The island's name is actually written in English via Katakana. And look, no, Roadstar wouldn't be the perfect English, but One Piece rarely is. Like say, Gland Line from earlier, and of course the disaster that is Levely, which is absolutely absolutely supposed to be reverie. And in before people tell me I'm actually reverie is a French word, I'm well aware, but it's also an English word, just like all French words, because that's what English is. We stole your language, now deal with it. But this could be why Crocus chose to remain at Reverse Mountain. He didn't pick an arbitrary spot to retire and raise suicidal whales. He's actually waiting at the true end point of the Grand Line. And he's waiting for somebody to actually figure that out and come back. And this is where things get funny in a very haha -ha sort of way, because what is beyond Reverse Mountain. Well, lots of things, but most importantly, Logtown, the town of beginnings and endings. Currently, it serves as a beginning, but pre-Pole Shift, Logtown would have been the ending. And many people forget that Logtown isn't the name of an actual island. Logtown, as the name suggests, is a town, and it's actually located on the Pole Star Islands, which means that now at both the beginning and the end of the Grand Line, we have islands named after stars, and also one named after a pole. But both of them are located pretty much right next to each other, just with this rather annoying red line plonked between them. And the suggestion made is that Lodestar and Polestar are actually one island. But no one has realized that yet because most of the island was submerged during the pole shift. And also because nobody except for Roger's crew have made it to Lodestar Island to put the pieces together. Two pieces that come together to form a one piece. Again, in our current world, Logtown is where the journey begins. But in the void century, prior to the pole shift, Logtown is where the journey ends. So just imagine if, say, a certain Goldie Roger sailed all throughout the world to find this island, only to discover that the place he was looking for all along was the very island he was born on. Pretty funny, right? Well worthy of a hearty laugh, haha. -ha. And the reason why Roger was too early is because nothing could be done until the next pole shift. And he basically says as much in his final words. And I want to pay specific attention to the word Soko. Soko basically means there, but also not just there, a very implied there that is implied to be close to the listener. So with that in mind, a very super accurate translation of Roger's last words would be, my treasure, if you want it, you can have it. Search for it. I left everything right there. As in right there. I, Goldie Roger, am looking at it right now as I'm saying these words, it's right there. And then he gets killed, bleh. And from there was the start of so many journeys to find the One Piece. Each and every one of them scouring the entire world world and not a single one realizing that it was right there where they began. To me, that would be the most hilarious outcome. The idea that on the very first page of One Piece, this one right here, the entire mystery of the series was already revealed. We were already at the end point, thus bringing One Piece full circle at both the town of beginnings and endings.